Hello, this is Nova Weekend Warriors, and today is a quick read of my blog post, Myth Busting, Water, Hydration, Muscles, and Massage. You might have heard the old myth that the way a muscle feels or its tonicity is an indicator of dehydration. Or maybe you've heard that water post-massage helps to flush out the system. Well, the good news is that is not the case. Neither is true. Let's explore why and or how these myths might have come about and what we can focus on instead. Through our years of experience working with the soft tissues of the body, massage therapists may feel differences in those soft tissues from client to client. Many times when working directly on the skin or even over clothing, we may make a mental note about what we feel is the tonicity of the underlying structures, including the muscles. But it's important that we don't infer that there's something wrong when these tissues feel hypotonic, having less tone or tension, or hypertonic, having more tone or tension. Because until we work together with a client regularly, we cannot know what your set point is for your muscle tone or tension. One person's hypotonic is another person's hypertonic because we're all different and unique. We cannot correlate a client's tonicity to pain, dysfunction, or dehydration for that matter. What we can do though is make a note of what we are feeling when we work with you. Make a note of your tonicity, but at least initially, those notes are going to be done with neutrality. And then we can compare from session to session along with many other factors some that may or may not correlate. The narrative of tightness or tonicity equaling dehydration may initially seem reasonable because it's human nature to visualize what our hands feel and compare that to others or feel the need to place some reasoning behind it. But we know there is no strong correlation between muscle tonicity and pain, dysfunction, or disruption. We know that tonicity varies widely from person to person. Now, that is not to say that that feeling of tightness or that your feeling that a muscle is weak is not valid when it's reported to us by you, by a client. Quite the opposite. What you are feeling is very important, actually far more important most times than what I may feel underneath my hands. My goal as a massage therapist is to work with you to address that feeling of tightness or weakness that you are reporting. But any feeling of tightness under my hands when it's not reported by a concern by my clients It doesn't mean that the muscles are dehydrated. It doesn't mean that they're too firm or too weak. A good example of this is when we work in the shoulder complex. The shoulder complex is an area where many muscles of varying tones with varying fibers in varying directions all come together, lay over one another, or cross over each other. The soft tissues in that area might feel ropey or thick. I actually like to think of it as a testament to the purpose and function of creating that perfect balance of stability, strength, mobility, and flexibility so that our shoulders can do all the things from simple to complex. But it's understandable that someone might feel that ropiness and thickness and might mistakenly interpret that as a dehydrated muscle. Since honestly, It could have a similar feel underneath our hands of a Slim Jim or beef jerky, aka dehydrated meat. But that is not the case. The ropiness and the thickness is not a cause for concern, and it doesn't mean the muscles are dehydrated. Many times, it's what the muscles are meant to feel like. So where did the muscle dehydration myth or the myth that water is necessary after a massage come from? We'll never know. I would gather, though, that these ideas probably started when we as a profession before, they probably started before we as a profession had readily available access to the study of anatomy and physiology. 
when we were relying solely on what we felt underneath our hands. Now, we work from a biopsychosocial model now, which it's a fancy way of saying that we take into consideration not only the biological and physiological, but also we place emphasis on the client, your thoughts, emotions, behaviors, cultures, beliefs, and what you're feeling. So we are better suited now to understand that structural changes from person to person don't always determine dysfunction, disorder, or pain. Your experience in your own body is what's important. A client's experience in their own body is what's important. Even in sports medicine and exercise science, we are learning that older ideas we assumed were true in the past are not. In the study of hydration, there was a rise in overhydration that came about after a focus on hydrating during races and training became the trend in the 80s, 90s, and still sometimes persists in sports. But we've learned from that and changes were made. The narratives of hydration are slowly fading away in the field of massage therapy as well. Sometimes it seems it's only fading very slowly, but truly a large majority of massage therapists I know do not believe that water is a requirement post-massage. Now, we do have an assessment tool at our fingertips to help us assess the risk of dehydration. The Skin Turger Test, that's T-U-R-G-O-R, is a part of the Skin Integrity Assessment. This test may be helpful for assessing for dehydration as a whole, but it does not specifically assess if a muscle is dehydrated. Also, in speaking with a few specialists who are focused on exercise science in differing fields, while the body can be dehydrated only through dissection, could we really see if a muscle was dehydrated? And if that was even plausible or possible, you would really be too far dehydrated to come in for a massage, certainly. In my state of Virginia, the skin turger test could absolutely be used by a massage therapist as an assessment tool to see if dehydration might be a possibility. But because I do not diagnose under my scope of practice, I would refer clients out to medical professionals versus telling a client they are dehydrated. I wouldn't recommend a treatment of drinking more water as I do not prescribe. Now, all this being said, I do offer clients water or tea if they would like pre-session or post-session because sometimes a glass of water or a cup of tea is just a nice thing to have. That was my blog post, Myth Busting, Water, Hydration, Muscles, and Massage. You can check out resources and further reading on my website, or I will go ahead and read through those here. Resources and further reading include Why Drink Water After Massage Therapy, painscience.com slash articles slash drinking dash water dash after dash massage dot php. Ask Healthy Living, Do You Really Need Water After a Massage? From the Huffington Post at huffpost.com slash entry slash water dash after dash a dash massage underscore n underscore two zero seven five six zero four dash amp laura allen on toxins and massage can be found on youtube at y o u t u dot b e slash g W, capital T, capital D, W, 1, K, capital X, P, O, 8. Does massage flush toxins? What about lactic acid? By Ian Harvey. Available on the Massage Sloth YouTube channel at Y-O-U-T-U dot B-E slash capital H, capital X, Q-Z-O, 3, capital F, 9 KTL. How much water do you actually need? By Christy Ashwanden, nytimes.com slash 2021 slash 09 slash 
317 slash well slash live slash how dash much dash water dash should dash I dash drink dot HTML. And this is what drinking too much water during exercise does to your body by Ariana Ewing Cha from the Washington Post at WashingtonPost.com slash news slash two dash your dash health slash WP slash 2015 slash 07 slash 01 slash this dash is dash what dash happens dash two dash your dash body dash if dash you dash drink dash two dash much dash water dash during dash exercise slash